Previously on Super Idols RPG, Rhythmics had their first big gig at the Stormlight and triumphed decisively over their rivals, Sagittaria. While no doubt a big moment for the group themselves, it was also big for one Lucia Moore, who was in attendance at the show with her father. Inspired by the power and talent of Rhythmics, Lucia is now determined to join the Fort McNally Idol Club. Will it really be that simple for her, though? And what does Rhythmics do now that their name is out there in a big way? That all remains to be seen on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG! As always, I am your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hey. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hi. And for the very first time joining our merry band, it's Liv! Hello! Hey! Yay. Hey! Yay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. New player, new player. <laughs> <laughs> so nervous, but so excited. Oh, me too, yes, very indeed. excited. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, you, you lovely listeners have all heard Liv in the, the ARC 2 prologue episode. She's going to be playing Lucia Moore the Delinquent, aka Trixie. And I'll save going into detail about how she's going to enter the story for now, because you'll, you'll, you'll see. You'll see how it goes in a bit. <laughs> It's been a good long while since we last recorded. We all finished up recordings for Arc 1 in early December 2020, just to give you an idea how far ahead we are. And as we are recording this, it is now late January 2021. So how's everybody feeling? New year? New arc? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excited. I'm very excited. So hyped. I'm excited about the arc. <laughs> I don't know about the New Year part stuff yet, oh, very <laughs> considering fair. how the year's yeah. been starting off, but yeah. We had planned to record this earlier in January, but then uh, January 2021's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, now I think we are all ready, all set for exciting idle activities. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, we are... Not actually jumping that much further forward in time since the end of Arc 1, we are basically just jumping ahead to the Monday after your gig at the Stormlight, which by most measures was an absolute roaring success. Uh, you managed to pull in attention from people at your school, in your school district, from in and around the Neon District, from all over Cadence. Just this podunk, nobody high school idol group not only managed to snag a prime spot on the Stormlight main stage, but also had the backing of both Rain Shadow Records and Crimson Signal, not to mention you have that increasingly viral video under your belts. Uh, you have that original downpour video gaining more and more views as people catch up on what started this all, plus all the videos from your trip through the Neon District and the show with Zero Degrees at the Paradise. Uh, there's like a new lyric video that Karen posted over the weekend that has a clip of your song from the gig. And there are, of course, videos from the gig itself. So all of that has contributed to a bunch of new attention for all of you over the weekend. All of your individual idle social media accounts have just blown up overnight, mostly with positive attention. You're still not really on the level of, like, the really big idols in Cadence, like, not even the really big online idols, because, like, there's just so many big idols in Cadence that even making, like, this kind of a splash isn't that big in the grand scheme but it certainly is big to you like you each have like several hundred new followers each on your your individual accounts and your main rhythmics account has surged to like over a thousand followers overnight so it's a pretty big jump from where you are how do you all think you're reacting to this newfound attention and do any of you have any highlights you think you might have experienced good or bad <laughs> I think Jaden's a bit overwhelmed. Um, 
I imagine that he wasn't much of a social media person anyway, so having this much attention on him, on his social media at least, is a lot. But I think his little sister's very excited. So she's probably the one that's been like, hey, you just passed 100 followers. Oh my God. And Jane's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I think you were wanting the attention, but now that you're actually getting it, it's like, oh my God, what do I even do with it? Yeah. Fair enough. Anything in particular that's stood out so far, or it's just like all like just a torrent that you can't even keep up with? Um, okay, I don't know if I'm allowed to impose this. Y yeah, probably. But maybe um, the Bob and Bros, they didn't like reply to a tweet or anything, but they liked the tweet of Jaden's that to do with the concert and he Big freaked deal. the hell out. Oh, absolutely. I think not only did they drop you a like, they also dropped you like an actual tweet with like a sparkly heart in it. Oh yeah, yeah, and I would have, yeah, Daniel would have been for the fainted. He would have been out of commission for like a couple of hours after that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god. And uh, goodness knows, um, Sophia has also followed you and is also like mutually freaking out about this. Yes. I think she's been texting you ever since you got her number and saw that definitely oh god i love it <laughs> this fan girl together yes it's just like the key <laughs> smash texts yeah <laughs> it's just pages and pages of key smashing <laughs> that vaguely resemble the names of each bomb bomb bro yeah <laughs> how about anybody else how about let's say i'm curious about alan slash queen bee since we know that Queen Bee's social media has been a little bit up and down, to say the least, over the course of the last arc. Well, right now, Queen Bee is just soaring. She woke up as Queen Bee, which was the first time, and immediately started checking everything that was online, responding to people, commenting, liking everything, just went in maybe a little bit overboard, but She's trying to build a following. Yeah, I can see her being very good at that. Um, the whole Sunday has been pretty much just uh, processing what happened and post-gaming. She's been uh, looking up ideas for the next show, trying to re-watch every possible angle of uh, what happened on stage to see what can she do better, and checking out a number of wrestling videos on the side. Ooh, very fun. And I think those papaya stands who were harassing you online before, most of them are singing a new tune, let's say. <laughs> Since your show was obviously backed by Crimson Signal and papaya's whole thing for you was wanting you to support Crimson Signal more. Yeah, now I'm useful. Yeah. Some of them might still be like giving you jabs for like the point in the show where you end up going off the stage, but it's much less compared to like the surge of like positive attention that you're getting. I had three rings out. I think I'm fine. And how about for Angie? I think Angie is feeling pretty good because she definitely nailed that fight. She performed the best she could have possibly performed, I think, given her current abilities. So she's feeling pretty good about that. But all this attention is coming and she's feeling pretty good about it. But I think she's also feeling some more pressure because like this performance went really well, but there's gonna be more performances and there's a tournament and there's so much other preparing to do. So of course, to celebrate, she has bought an entire new set of stationery so that she can organize properly. And every single member of the team has a color that she's going through their strengths and weaknesses um, with Karen, of course. Mm -hmm. Like Karen's input, she's, drawing on a lot because uh, Karen's watching from the crowd so she can see everything. And uh, yeah, that's where she's at. Just, uh, I guess she stress stationaries. <laughs> 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 I am not surprised and I'm very, very happy that she has all of this to work with now. Uh, Karen also is doing her absolute best to like retweet and quote tweet everything that all of y'all are posting and make sure like she's she's like managing the Rhythmics main account uh, and keeping on top of making like posts and moderating everything for that. I love that. 
a social media manager. <laughs> and how does Valerie feel about all this? I'm very curious about Valerie as well. So I guess I uh, realized a, a thing that we didn't really discuss was if she needs to recover from the attack that hit her while she was detransformed or if that needs to be treated in some way. Oh, that's a good idea. I can't remember exactly how bad we said that was. I think probably just resting over the weekend would probably be fine. Okay, yeah, so she's been resting and has also been, uh, you know, when people are talking about you or something you've made or even just something you like online and, you know, it's a ratio of, like, 10 to 1 people being totally positive versus people being rude and terrible, and so you compulsively seek out all of the people that are being rude and terrible and only read those. Oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> the show, you know, overall went really well, but Valerie is just worried about detransforming and messing up and, like, knows logically that, you know, it turned out fine and the show is great and the overall response has been good, but can't help thinking about how she had a you know moment of weakness and messed up, and if anyone saw who she was, or if people think that she's incompetent now, or you know that kind of just obsessive looking for things to justify her fears. Yeah, that is very fair. Um, and thankfully, like on that note, in terms of like, do people know? Do you have to worry about that? Rain Shadow has been extremely good at very quickly scrubbing any video or photo evidence of your detransformation on stage. And thankfully it wasn't too hard because like where that hit you was kind of off to the side of the stage, like partially in shadow as well. So it wasn't easy for people to like see your face in detail from that angle unless they were like right up close and Anything that might have been from up that close seems to be offline. You can't find it. But, of course, as with anything regarding scrubbing stuff from the internet, you can't be 100% sure that nobody saw or saved anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, mm, I don't know. But so far, nobody's messaged you about it, at least. So that's something. Nobody's tried to dox you. Oh, that's always good. You know, that's what you hope for uh, when people are talking about you on the internet is to not get doxed. Pretty much. Uh, and elsewhere, outside of the sphere of Rhythmics and the reaction to their social media, we also have one other person in Cadence who may have been affected by this show, may or may not have been present at the show, in fact, definitely was present at the show, um, who maybe felt a little bit inspired, let's say. <laughs> Liv. Assuming that people know who your character is from the previous episode, if you don't, you should definitely go back and listen, because <laughs> you should just know already. How is Lucia spending her Sunday before going back to school after having seen the show at the Stormlight? Wake up early, go on a run, come back in, um, sit down with her family, have breakfast, try to torment her siblings, and then get straight to work because she has a lot of work. She has been putting in overtime on her, quote, idol training, unquote, um, which yeah. is mostly just her dancing around in her room and practicing singing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she she's good, you know? She's got it. But no, it's like she now is determined and she also watches the video over and over again. She kind of like built her list of like pros and cons and is essentially trying to find like a gap that is perfectly Lucia sized in the Rhythmics lineup. <laughs> Where can she come in and fix their flaws might be a strong word, but I wouldn't say that it's inaccurate. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, we'll see if you can find the opening that you need. Yes. So you're all heading off to school on Monday morning. Uh, you're all arriving roughly the same time because everybody has to arrive at school at the same time unless anybody is like a super keener or anything. But definitely as you're arriving, people at the school definitely know what happened. And a couple of you don't have secret identities necessarily. 
Um, Jaden and Angie, describe how you're you're entering the school, like the area of the school to start with. <laughs> I don't know. The front door, probably the door she usually uses to get in. She's probably got an mm-hmm. armful of like, like she's got a new binder in addition to the notepad. And the binder has, you know, colorful tabs. And every other person on the team has a uh, special paper color that she's designated to, for their note section mm-hmm. in the binder. And uh, she's carrying that with her backpack and and whatever. <laughs> and it just hasn't occurred to her probably that people would accost her at school again. <laughs> this is about, <laughs> about the show. Yeah, the, I ask like where you're going exactly because there's a question of whether you'll even get to the front door in a good amount of time right now. Okay. <laughs> Jaden, I assume you're kind of going in a, a similar direction? Yeah, I think Jaden is like hurriedly doing his homework last minute as he's walking in because I think he's been a bit too excited or just too overwhelmed over the weekend to actually do any homework that he probably had due. So I think he's like probably walking in. Oh my god, did Angie <laughs> lend you a clipboard or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would she? He would t- happily take it, because I think writing on paper with, without some support is very hard. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like she, uh, maybe he asks her for one, and yeah. she just happens to have a bunch. <laughs> like, oh yeah, sure, take this one. And it's like blue with like gold sparkles or something. Thank you, thank you. My handwriting's awful. Go on. <laughs> yeah, and as you're both doing this and exchanging the clipboard and approaching the school grounds... There are definitely a few people who spot you and are like, wait, 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 here they come, here they come. And they start cheering like, oh my god, Rhythmics, Jaden, Angie, Elementum, Bane Raven, ah! <laughs> and you have a decent sized swarm of kids who um, suddenly appear around the two of you, who are very interested to talk to you. How do you react? Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh... uh... And she's just like holding her binder and her clipboard and it's kind of like a deer in headlight situation like she did not plan for this and yep. they're like hounding you they're like oh my god that was so awesome how did you do all that stuff do you know anything about queen bee do you know anything about violence violet like they're they're pressing you for information there's questions coming from all around and uh, this is the scene that um everyone around you sees by the way but, like if anybody else is arriving around this time everyone Glad you enjoyed the show. Um, yes, we know them. They are we we play with them. Um, could we go away? I think we'll, you might end up being late. Um, could you? <laughs> do you gonna try and like get through the crowd and take Angie with him, noticing that um they've kind of frozen in spot in the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're a little too excitable. They're not really thinking about being late right now. <laughs> and they're making it hard for you to get through. Yeah, she just kind of instinctively grabs his arm and is like, okay, let's go. And they just kind of try to push through together. Yeah. And I'm just like, excuse me, thanks. Thanks for your support. And then she's trying to like muster the public persona that she hasn't had to at school yet. Yeah, thank you. uh... (laughs) Valerie, Alan, or Lucia, how do you react to this scene? from your vantage points, because you don't have this same level of attention at the moment. Lucia just, like, stands far away and just, like, kind of watches, just genuinely shocked. Like, she saw a bunch of kids at her sc- like at school at the show, but she didn't expect this kind of a thing. So she's just kind of watching in, like, slack-jawed awe, because this is wild. <laughs> Stuff like this doesn't happen at their school. Yeah, like, not all these kids were at the show, but word spreads fast when, like, something amazing happens to someone from Fort McNally because it happens so rarely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Valerie is staying at a distance but watching because she she wanted to see what the reaction was, but is not part of the group. Mm. You do actually catch, like, a couple people looking your way and whispering to each other, but you can't quite hear what they're saying. Of course. You get the sense that some people are wondering about you, but they're not sure what they might have seen. Yeah, I think once I I noticed that happened a few times, I do the, like, look away. I'm not, I wasn't even looking in that direction. What are you talking about? And and keep heading into the school. (laughs) Um, And how about Alan? 
and then mixed in with the crowd. Uh, just uh, basking in everybody talking about rhythmics. <laughs> <laughs> Smarter, not harder. So you're, you're sort of acting like one of the fans almost, except not as excited. Yes, I'm just, I'm not trying to bother NG and J them, but I'm trying to build up the whole thing a little bit. <laughs> I think if, if Jaden like sees Alan amongst the crowd, he would at least give them a, a, like a wave. Because <laughs> they had an interaction, and as far as Jaden's are concerned, this is a really nice person. <laughs> I want to be friends, I want to be <laughs> Alan waves back, feeling a little guilty because they never really got back to Jaden. They were still seen every day, so... <laughs> mm. Yeah, so the two of you are still having trouble getting through this crowd. What are you going to do to try and get through it? Or is anybody going to try and help them? Absolutely not. If anything, <laughs> I think Lucia, like, steals herself and <laughs> her, like, five foot, five one self and just, like, pushes through. And just like, excuse me, um, hello, um, excuse me, um, hello, can you please, um, <sighs> okay, and just, like, is pushing through the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, Making like, they're, it's hard scene. to get through, but you're very determined. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I'm going to say you have little trouble, like, getting through, especially since you're shorter than a lot of people. You can get under their arms and whatnot. Hmm. I think she actually, at some point, like, pushes between Angie and Jaden. Does not say <laughs> anything to them, but, like, pushes between them so she can keep moving forward. <laughs> As Lucia pushes past, Jaden's like, I'm oh, sorry. It's like, let's, let's go through. Doesn't even look back. Keeps walking. <laughs> Too cool. Oh, you're just trying to get into the school now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I made my point. <laughs> Honestly, I take her lead and I just try to follow her. And <laughs> it's just like following the, the break in people that she's created. It's just be like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and that's her chance. Yeah, this is our chance. <laughs> I think that works. I think that works. <laughs> so you managed to follow the one person who's like, made like a break through the, the crowd uh, and you do manage to get to the front door but people are still kind of following you until you get inside whereupon like the bell starts ringing and like people are like oh god I guess we have to actually get to homeroom or whatever so the crowd does start to disperse eventually but like people who are in your class are definitely keeping close um, and there's chatter kind of all around the hallways people like smiling and waving at you wherever you go it's kind of a surreal experience where, wherever he can, if he meets anyone that's like in his class, just like while he's doing his home, we're like, hey, um, could you help me with question five? I'm really confused about that. Um, and because he's got all this attention, oh. he might as well use it to get his homework done. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you absolutely can take advantage of that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> People are more than happy to help you out. Someone even offers to give you like a copy of their finished homework. Oh God, no. Oh, no. Jaden turns that down immediately. He's like, no, I don't, I don't want to copy anything. I just, I just, don't understand this question. Um, could you help me out? I'm kind of stuck at this point. <laughs> okay, so that sets the tone for the day, <laughs> I feel like. Generally, throughout the rest of the school day, it's going to be hard for Jaden and Angie to get a moment's peace. Um, and of course, they keep asking about, like, do you have any information on, like, who Violence Violet is or who Queen Bee is? So <laughs> it's going to be... An interesting experience until, like, your school manages to, like, calm down and accept that this is the new norm. Is there anything that anybody needs to do during the school day before, like, it becomes time to, like, head home and, like, go to the club meeting? Uh, well, if it's one of the days in which uh, Alan and Jade have a class in common, I'd like to ask him an auto for an autograph. I've got oh, sure. one of the flyers from the show. So, yeah, I, I hope it's not a problem. I just think you were really great Saturday. And I don't know if you can tell, but Jane is definitely blushing. Aww. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I haven't actually considered. I don't know if I have. I, I mean, I, you'll be my first, I guess. I just like you just kept drumming. It was go, it was going crazy all around. You took a horse to. Stop you. Oh, yeah. That I didn't see that coming. I didn't expect her to turn into a horse. I, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Uh, that makes me really happy. It was amazing. Thank you. I hope I hope other shows. Um, hope you enjoy them as well. 
I, I think I will. Thank you. Yeah, he'll sign like the flyer. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, it was cute. Aww. I'm also curious, Lucia, like what is your plan for approaching the club today or trying to join the club? Okay, on her lunch break, Lucia is going to go to like, I guess the administrative office. Or I think she like, no, she would probably know that Mrs. Doyle is the idol club like advisor. I think that's pretty like easy to find out. Yeah, like music teacher handles the music club. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. And like if she didn't know, she could ask some people. So I think she like went to Mrs. Doyle and basically was like, hi, I'm here to sign up for the Idol Club. I'm here to join. Um, Is there like an application or anything? Yeah, if you're going straight to Mrs. Doyle's room, you notice she's got like a whole bunch of papers strewn about her desk. Clearly, she's got a lot of work to go through today. So she can't like pay too much attention to you at the moment but she is very excited to see that you're joining the idol club and she smiles at you very nicely like oh yes of course um here let me see if i can and she like rustles papers around on her desk like searching for like the club sign up forms and all the schedules and robert's rules of order and whatnot that she needs to give you. <laughs> um here um and she pulls out like a, a little information package for you um if you could just fill this out um, let me know when you've got that done. Maybe bring that to me, like, at the end of the school day today. We'll see if we can get you sorted out, and uh, we'll we'll figure out how to get you to the room. Um, maybe we can get um, there. Well, she's sort of the club president. Well, whatever. Um, she's the point of contact, anyway. We can get Angie, uh, Miss Blake, to show you where the room is, let's say. <laughs> and she thrusts the papers at you and <laughs> tries to get back to her work. Uh, Lucia just takes the papers and nods, has a thought to herself of like, is there no president? Okay, whatever. Perfect. Perfect. Good. You know what, Lucia? It's good to have goals. And if there's no president, that's a goal. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And just like nods to Miss Doyle, thanks her, and leaves. Very good. Um, Yeah, and I think she like, does that thing where you hide what you're actually doing in your textbook and like is filling out the paper during her classes. Very good. Very good. So I think you managed to make it to the end of the school day. Um, so at the at the end of the school day, uh, you end up hearing over the intercom, Evangeline Blake and Lucia Moore, please report to the front admin office. Lucia looks a little confused, but goes. Because, Okay. So yeah, you both arrive at the admin office. How do you both react to each other being there? Um, I probably say hello, just do a little wave. Lucia got there as soon as she could, so she thinks she was waiting. And when Angie walks in, she 100% recognizes her right off of the bat, tries so hard not to react, though. Like, everybody else in the school might have been like, oh my gosh, da 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 Lucia's like stone face, arms crossed, up against the wall, nods her head to the wave. She is <laughs> poker facing it right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it that like, what are you in for type nod? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just an admin office. They both got called in, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, hey, how's it going? It's good. How about you? Uh, I'm all right. It's been, it's been a day yeah i mean you caused like a traffic jam at the very opening of school so i can't imagine it went up from there thank you for your help getting us into the door i i didn't know what to do and they wouldn't like move away to let us through so it was just a whole awkward thing but you know it's the Uh, crowd that caused the traffic jam you know they're all responsible for themselves (laughs) Lucia's trying so hard to fight a smile because all she's thinking about is like, oh my god, thanks. Yeah, you helped me. Um, she's trying so hard not to fight a smile. Aww. She's like, yeah, no, like, not a big deal. I mean, we all have somewhere to be, so. Yeah. And speaking of places to be. I was looking for Mrs. Doyle. Or Miss Doyle. Is it Miss Doyle? Oh yeah, it's Miss Doyle. Miss Doyle, yeah. Yeah, and as you mentioned the name of a teacher, uh, you you get not uh, not Ms. Doyle uh, to meet you, but Mr. Pollock, he gives you a wave as he enters the 
admin office and is like, oh, hey, girls, uh, thanks for thanks for coming down here. Ms. Doyle asked me to get you all set up. Um, I hear that Ms. Moore here is going to be joining the Idol Club. Oh, I'm very excited for you. And he gives you the finger guns of approval. And it's a bit awkward, so. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. <laughs> Angie turns to Lucia and kind of raises her eyebrows like, you could have started with that (laughs) kind of expression. (laughs) She's just looking at the papers on the counter. Mm hmm. Oh, that's that's great, Mr. Pollock. And now suck up mode is activated. Yeah, he's taking uh, Lucia's like uh, sign up papers and filing them wherever they need to get filed and giving her the papers that she needs to take with her. (laughs) And there's no special, you know, special things in there. No scavenger hunts, she says with a wince. (laughs) It's just paperwork, (laughs) right? Uh, You're so young. All right. Mr. Pollock says, "Um, there was only so many times that I was going to reset the scavenger hunt before we just let people join the club. And he gives you a bit of a a slightly more strained laugh than you normally see from him. Okay. Anyway, you see Angie just kind of like, there's like this moment where she just relaxes because like hearing about the scavenger hunt, she kind of tenses up thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) And like Flashbacks. I'm not I'm not expected to make to make her go through that, am I? Like and then she's just like Whew. <laughs> just like the thing that happens in anime where like the little ghost comes out of her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And then she puts her hands on her hips and she's like, follow me. <laughs> and for convenience sake, because I just realized that I probably should have actually called like more members of Rhythmics here just okay. to make sure that y'all were in that the does, scene together. That does make um, sense. <laughs> do you mind if I say that you've texted the rest of the group to get them to join you up near the up near the admin office? Yes. <laughs> or at least the, the ones who are okay with being out in public? I guess that makes more sense <laughs> than her just being like, come to our secret room, new person we just met. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to get to the to the room or to meet you at the at the front admin office. Yeah. <laughs> whichever they're able to do. Yeah. And it's in like a series of emojis that somehow everybody <laughs> understands. It's like three people walking, a fax machine, <laughs> a computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a clipboard at the end. Yes. <laughs> Just so we know for sure it's Angie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where's each member of the club going to go when they get that message? Valerie's going to go to the meeting room, the conference room, which for some reason it was just the room numbers, but in number emoji, which seemed unnecessary. (laughs) (laughs) They'll never crack our code. (laughs) Jaden will meet them at the admin's office, I think. All right. And we'll uh, sneak out, transform and meet them there. All right. So you're going to do your quick transformation label shift. What would you like to shift? Let's see. Yes, I want lower savior, and I'm going to raise uh, freak. Okay. So that will put you at a two savior and a one freak. Okay, perfect. Actually, I think it might make sense for Valerie to also sneak into the conference room and transform and then head to the admin office. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, this will be interesting. Mm -hmm. I know. I just had the same thought. Because I realized that, you know, as a player, that gives me more opportunity for Valerie to be uh, put in an uncomfortable situation. Like, maybe do we want to have it be like everybody, like, the message was like, everybody come to the admin office. Um, We need to shepherd someone to the room. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So the people who need to transform can transform and then come. Yeah. And for my transformation, I'll put superior up and danger down. Okay. Ooh. Is this a good time to use my new outfit? Oh, if you want to, sure. So the transformation sequence is pretty much the same. But when she touches the ground, it's different. Because uh, she's wearing some flat shoes, black chucks, 
fitted black jeans and the jacket uh, it's completely covered in black and gold sequins in a zigzag b-stripes pattern and under she's wearing a yellow tank top with a loose black crop top with rhythmics written on it in gold in a kind of a graffiti style Oh my god, casual Queen Bee! <laughs> Cash Bee! Cash Bee! So good! Cash Bee! And also yes. huge diva sunglasses. Oh yes. my god! <laughs> yes! Perfect! I love like, it. don't talk to me, I need my glass of boxed wine. Like, yes. big old sunglasses. <laughs> a few people, like, you run into in the hallway who start to fan over you, see you in the glasses, and they're like, they immediately, like, just know to give you a wider berth because you have that star aura. Yeah, I'm just trolling down the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't even block you if they want just to. <laughs> don't even look at me. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, how about Violet's Violet? I guess you could probably just, if you went outside to transform anyway, you could probably just come in the front door. Yeah, yeah. And be right at the admin office. Yeah, so I'd have to find some place out of the way to transform and then sort of rush in and try to just get in the door and right into the office before anyone sees me. Yeah, like you just managed to dodge around like some people who are like leaving through the front building to catch their bus or whatever. And they, they see like a blur of like black and purple go by like, was that... <laughs> No. <laughs> I think we saw in the episode on the street that Vivi just doesn't really know how to interact with fans at all directly. Mm. You all managed to congregate in the front office. I guess, is Jaden transforming too, or did Jaden just come as Jaden? Jaden just came as Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When Jaden walks in, no response from Lucia. When Queen B struts in upside down <laughs> from the ceiling into the room, Lucia is once again trying so hard and then Violence Violet walks in and she's just like vibrating and her lips are like clenched <laughs> so tight together. She is oh, no. trying so hard to keep it together. She takes a deep breath, blows it out. <clears throat> Sup? Hi. Um, hey everyone. Uh, hello. Why, hello? Uh, are you our new, like, member? Uh, yeah, I am. Oh, uh, well, hello, I'm, I'm Violence Violet. Cool. Hi, I'm Jaden. She looks him up and down, and then just turns to Queen Bee. You know who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, the name's Asiya, um, and thanks for letting me join your club or whatever. Nice meeting you, Lucia. Well, I, we should have, you know, an, an audition. I mean, I'm sure that you know what you're doing if you're if you're interested enough to join the club, but we should determine if that's the case. Like, looks over at Angie for backup. Yes, I... That is a great idea, Vivi. Why don't we go outside and you can show us what you can do? Yeah, no, I mean, totally makes sense. People have to audition for, like, agencies or whatever, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, let's go outside. <laughs> yeah, and, like, as uh, Lucia's walking, she's, like, talking to Angie, and she's like, yeah, you know, like, there's a whole bunch of different agencies, and they all have, like, these different, you know, ways that they're going about it, and sometimes you have to go in through training, which is, like, a whole other thing, and she's just, like, trying to show that, like, hey, I've done my homework. Like, she's just going <laughs> off. <laughs> she's <laughs> so I feel like... And she's mostly taken aback by all this information because there's probably a lot of stuff that she didn't know because she didn't do any research, really. <laughs> she's just like, I like dancing. I'll do this. So that's maybe where she's at knowledge wise. Her parents used to do all the management stuff for her. Yes. Like when she was going to be a dance idol. That's very true. Yeah. She didn't really think about doing it herself. She's just hoping things would fall into her lap like they used to. Um, <laughs> but she is trying to listen and like ask questions and stuff like that. She's not like blank look at the information overload, if that makes sense. Like she's engaging as you're all walking outside. And also you'll find she'll just like stop and tuck and take everyone down a side hallway when some students walk by. <laughs> stuff like that. I was about to ask before you go too far, like what direction are you actually going? Because we're actually going to utilize the map this episode. So I was thinking of taking everyone around side behind the gym track area. Oh, sure. Yeah. So you're heading out basically like the front door and around the side and the back. Um, 
I think she was going through the hallways because she probably didn't think it through that she'd probably have to think of a more low key way to get where she wants to go now <laughs> because people keep pulling yeah. her aside to talk to her. Actually, probably you start going in that direction and then you start to realize that there are still like a bunch of students around doing their own after school activities and they see you all walking as a group of, and it's like, oh my God, it's Rhythmics, ah! <laughs> and they start like swarming you again. Um, so you have to find a quick way out. Yeah, so um, I was like this way and then we lead everyone back out to the front door. <laughs> 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 Back at like the front door of the school, which is like on the bottom near the 100 room. Yes. <laughs> Why don't we just like go behind equipment storage? To equipment storage. <laughs> <laughs> Great suggestion. You're practically a member of the team already. I'm putting this in your review. And she's like, as she's power walking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you still have, like, students who are, like, trailing around you, and there's more who are, like, milling about outside who see you and join the crowd following you. Wait, they're all following us? Yes, there are people following you, they because they want to, like, fan over you and ask you questions. <laughs> oh my gosh. Vivi is, like, trying to ignore them, and so she says, uh, says to Lucia, um, so, uh... Are you planning to maintain uh, your your identity as a, a secret identity? Uh, should we be finding a more private place? If you um, can, you transform. Um, um, would you like to? Well, I guess like not like entirely secret. There's a couple people I don't want to know yet, but I think knowing them, they're probably not here. Ren, your sibling, Ren is probably in the art room, which is kind of nestled deep in the middle of the school, so that's not near you right now. Yeah, it's fine. I can transform here, I don't mind. Okay. And Lucia, like, essentially cracks her knuckles, turns to the crowd, and <laughs> points at them, and is just like, either watch or get lost, and she <laughs> gets started on her transformation. Yes, all right. It's a move, right? Like, I have to shift, shift my labels. Shift my labels. Mm. You're going to swift them, yes. Swift them. So just because I like to be formal and it's the start of a new arc, I'm going to read out the text of the move. Yeah. Mm. So you get to do your transformation sequence. When you begin your transformation, say what it looks like and what drives you to enter your empowered form. You gain access to all your powers and shift any two of your labels. You cannot transform if you have four more conditions marked. And while transformed, add lose sync with your powers to the seven to nine options on take a powerful blow. So what does your transformation look like? So it starts off with Lucia putting a hand to the center of her chest. Then she extends it to the right, one pointer finger up, and then flicks it down as she starts to turn. A circle of soft light forms on the ground around her feet, and when she completes the turn, the light erupts out, flickering in different colors, like a rainbow prism catching light. Her hair flies free of the like little buns that she has, and the bottom ends of her curls start to turn like a sort of blonde color. At the top half of her hair, there's two small pigtails that come out while the rest hangs free. And as the light clears, we see Lucia in matching um, baby pink high-waisted shorts, a halter top, and a little choker. On a one, two, three beat, she rocks her hips from right to left, moving her hands from down low to bent, then above her head to punctuate the knee-length high-heeled boots, silver chains, jewelry, and crystals that appear with a flash of glittering light. They basically appear on her, like her feet, her waist, and then on the choker on her ears. She pivots so her back is to the camera, and as she looks over her shoulder, we see that her dark brown eyes are now like a really dark pink, and the freckles that decorate her cheeks and nose are now silver specks of lights and sparkles and glitter. An oversized, sparkling, cropped, puffy, like white holographic kind of jacket appears, and it's hanging off of her shoulders like a shawl, less of a jacket, more of a shawl. Um, and with a little wink, Trixie turns around, strikes a pose, her hand cocked and chin raised up. Hey there, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If we consider Lucia's intro in episode 20 to be like a prologue or episode zero of sorts, then this is episode one proper for arc two and we're all 
so, so excited to be finally sharing it with you all. I just wanted to take a quick break here and remind everyone that this show does have a Patreon and you can support us with it. It's under my name, Aaron Cerise, because it was originally made to support all the projects that I make, but since Super Idols is the only project I'm working on at the moment, it's effectively the Super Idols Patreon. <laughs> Funds we get through the Patreon go towards podcast hosting, transcriptions, Kathleen's editing services, character art commissions, and our subscription to Storyblocks, which allows us to use most of the music and sound effects you hear throughout the show with no legal worries. So I'll admit we don't have as big a range of rewards as other shows have, but I do think we've got some cool stuff to offer. At $1 a month, you get access to a ton of bonus audio for the show, including our session zeros from whenever new players get introduced, and before and after session talks for various episodes, which includes our end of session rounds, which normally get edited out of the podcast. Sometimes we'll also throw up outtakes and alternate scenes as well, like, the one that we just put up for the Q&A is particularly worth hearing. There's a ton of great stuff I had to cut out of the Q&A for one reason or another, and over 30 minutes of that stuff is available as an outtakes reel for $1 plus patrons to listen to. And if you're feeling extra generous and want to help the show out a little bit more, uh, you can support us for $5 a month, which will get your name shouted out on the podcast in these middle bits. Oh, look at that, just like all these lovely people. Like Tanner S. and Eric Cooney. Chris T, Liv C, hi Liv, Jordan Cuttlefish, Wolfie, Cedric and Charlie, The Joiner, Matthew F, and Aurabolt. I'm gonna try and start saying more of these names per episode going forward, because it feels like there's more room to say them in the middle bits now. <laughs> that should hopefully get all the names cycled more frequently and get y'all more bang for your buck on that. So yeah, I won't go too much more about the Patreon, it's a pretty simple Patreon, uh, so hopefully, uh, if you have the ability to give us some money every month, uh, that's that's great. That'll help, again, cover costs and help support players in the future. Uh, and if you're not able to, that, then we totally understand. It's tough financial times all around for a lot of people. So we always still appreciate um, likes and shares and all that good stuff. Recommending us to your friends, like podcasts in particular, do very well when spread by word of mouth because they don't really have as many centralized networks like uh, YouTube videos and whatnot do. So the more word of mouth spreading that a podcast can get, the better. And uh, the more reviews it gets, the better. So you can drop us reviews on iTunes or Podchaser or on the YouTube uploads of the episodes, wherever is convenient for you. <laughs> Just, the again, engagement equals good for algorithms, I guess. <laughs> but it also just makes us feel good. <laughs> Anyway, I won't hold you up here too much longer. We'll just leave you with a couple promos from our friend podcasts today. You'll hear one from a new friend of the show, Dice Fiends, and also from Sword of Symphonies, one of our network partners and the podcast of our fearless editor, Kathleen. So enjoy the two of those, and I'll let you get back to the show right away. Hello, and welcome to Dice Fiends. We are an actual play podcast that runs games in over a dozen systems, with a rotating and diverse cast of players. Our games range from the rules light like Coffee Punk and Big Gate Orcs to crunchy games like Starfinder and Shadowrun 6 Edition. But one thing's for certain, whether we're powered by the apocalypse or we're grabbing as many D6s as we can hold in Shadowrun, we're fiends for the sounds of those rolling dice. You can find us every Wednesday on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get good podcasts. One time on Sword of Symphonies, our captain played an accordion number for a demon as a backing track to the story the demon was telling him. This one time on Sword of Symphonies, there was a rodeo rider on a giant eagle bird thing, and it was rad. She's going to take her jacket and try to put it over the bird's eyes, like create a blindfold. I would once again like to reiterate what could possibly go wrong. This one time on Sword of Symphonies, the crew dug up some buried treasure. No, look at this moss. It's attached to a shovel. <laughs> look, I love all three of you, but Tissa is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of Sword of Symphonies is the majesty of the spell casting. Brilliant carnival. Starlight stars. Flying shark. Knife pain. <laughs> Fry's bolt. So if you'd like seafaring adventure, a lot of game design talk, music written in-house, and a lot of whatever that was just now, join us every week on Sword of Symphonies. Jaden is applauding. 
And he's like, oh my god. And he's like clapping excitedly. <laughs> he's become one of the fans that are currently cheering for you <laughs> because that was some cool shit. <laughs> and for my label shift, I'm going to shift mundane down and freak up. Okay. That should put you at a, what is it, zero mundane and a one freak? No, it's a one mundane because my dad told me to be a normal kid. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> How dare. He's a good guy. He means well. <laughs> but I'm not normal, Dad. <laughs> well, you're certainly anything but normal right now. Mm, true, true, true. You are a star, as they say. Oh, and you're also coordinating probably very well with Queen Bee right now. Oh, yeah, totally. Jacket buddies, you know? <laughs> yes. Jacket game. Hi. <laughs> Everybody get on this level. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> Vivi is just sort of watching, um, not quite judgmentally, but, you know, evaluating, and she just gives a slight nod. That was so cool. I lower my glasses, too. <laughs> yeah, so Trixie's just standing there, like, just chest out, like, puffed up, ready to go. And she looks at everybody, and she's like, so what do you want to see? Do you want song, dance? Yeah, and now you've got, like, the crowd, uh, like, forming, like, a circle around you because they want to see whatever you're about to do. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so um, before she does that, and she was like, that was awesome. Uh, just one moment. She kind of puts her index finger, just like, one moment. And uh, she walks over to the crowd, and then she was like, show's over. Go home. <laughs> we have practice to do. And we can't practice if you're following us around all the time. But we want to see, the, the, like, uh, this is, like, the, the coolest thing that's happened in, like, a million years. We want to see. And, the, the, like, there are some people who are listening because they're decent kids and they're like, all right, fine. But there's, like, some diehards who, like, just won't take the hint. I will make sure this goes on your personal education records. And she's crossing her arms and she's got the clipboard and she's writing Ooh. names down. <laughs> Um, it sounds like you're trying to provoke them. Uh, or at least provoke an action. I want them to go away. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You want them to do something, and you're doing something specific to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to get you to roll superior on this okay. for provoke someone. You're trying to get them to disperse and leave you alone. That's right. Here we go. Oh, nice. Oh, oh damn. Yes. The clipboard <laughs> of power comes through. <laughs> That is a full I'm 12. I'm never going to level at this rate. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was definitely the clipboard. It actually, there's like an invisible plus five on there. <laughs> with the clipboard, but yeah. Or so we say, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely like people know the power of Evangeline Blake's clipboard <laughs> and how swiftly she can bring down administrative justice. And they're like, there's a, a collective shudder that goes through the crowd, like, oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> it was... <laughs> All right, so that, yeah, the remaining diehards at that, they're like, they still clearly look like they want to see more, but they're walking away like puppies with their tails between their legs, like, okay, fine. So you manage to find, like, a spot, like, kind of behind equipment storage where you can do what you want to do. And Angie sighs, and she's like, oh. <sighs> And she does that thing, you know, where you kind of, like, press your palms away, like you're trying to remove all the bad energy. <laughs> 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 and then uh, it's like you see the performance uh, acting president mask come on. So she spins around, her ponytail spins with her. She's like, okay, show us what you got. All right. Um, I think she's going to put on a little performance for them. And I think, like, she's going to try to start out with, like, singing and stuff, like, ease them into it, and try to also, like, sprinkle in both her other, like, music abilities and some of her super idol abilities. That's kind of, like, what I had in mind. All right. So I think we're going to split this into two moves, actually. We're going to do It's Time for My Solo to represent you displaying just your straight-up idol skills and then I'm going to have you roll and unleash your powers to, like, successfully demonstrate your powers without anything going wrong. Okay. And then remind me, what do we use for... It's time for my solo. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, it's a Savior, I believe. It's savior. savior, yeah. 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 Oh, no. Yeah, it's plus Savior. 
Oh, no. Okay. Oh, is that not good? <laughs> no, it's like negative one. It's fine. I was like, I'm not going to need this. <laughs> bada boom, bada boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I, okay, oh, I have a question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can use team for this. Yes, I was going to ask. Could I? <laughs> I, you do have only one team point, though. You, the one team point I gave you at the top of the session. So this is the only instance you could use team this session. I think this would be a good reason to use it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, You yeah. guys are so kind and gracious. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing to help? I don't think he transforms, so he doesn't summon his, like, drum set. But, like, I think as she's singing... Um, he kind of like drums against the ground or against the wall to help with the beat and add a little bit of what a bass a ward can give <laughs> to um, <laughs> wherever she's singing. Honestly, that probably helps, especially when she's rapping, because then you give her a beat for her to freestyle to. So that's actually extremely useful. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure then. I think Jane is like really into the performance and after once um, she reaches the rapping part, He's, I don't think he even notices. He just like subconsciously starts drumming to the beat of it. And uh, cause he's just that into it as she's going along. Yeah, like you're near the side of the building. You're near like the door into equipment storage that gives a pretty nice like hit when you, when you hit against it. So that'll provide like a nice beat for your flow to follow. I'm just like getting flashbacks to high school. Did anybody else have like the kids that would bang out beats on their table? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. I think it's called uh, I was, having I ADHD. People, so I, I can't, I. <laughs> it was it was a mix of like having ADHD, but then those kids, those same kids, would be like, "Yeah, man, I'm just like I'm go home and I make beats," and I'm like, "Do you?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I wasn't that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll accept that. You can use your team to push that up to a seven. So on a seven, you get a decent reaction. Most of your audience reacts the way you want, within reason. Some may still be unmoved. And you take plus one forward on your next move and mark a condition that reflects how you feel about your performance's shortcomings. Oh, uh, insecure. <laughs> For sure. But, uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. But now I get to unleash my powers. And that's in mm -hmm. Freak, which I just upped. Yes. And what are you doing with your powers? To Trying to do with your powers, anyway. I think... For right now, she's just showing off like her illusion abilities. So I think, oh yeah, I know what she does. She essentially um, creates two illusions of herself. And while her outfit is all like pink with the jacket of everything, I think theirs is just like black and white. So, you know, she's the main attention. Um, and she creates two illusions of herself so that she's in the center and they like kind of do the little dance singing portion of the performance with her. Awesome. I think Angie and Queen Bee might be getting zero degrees flashbacks at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what concern. <laughs> but yes, you're doing very well at it. I probably well, we'll see how your role goes and see how well you're doing at it. But you are gonna get a plus one from your It's Time for My Solo for this. Oh wait, okay, actually did I Oh yep, that yeah, added correctly. <laughs> Oh, oh no. no, yeah, Aww. so with the plus one, it's still a five. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the, so, oh, no. hmm. I don't think there's anything I can do. I think the, um, yeah, it's just bad. <laughs> like, they're all distorted, or... Or they were, like, offbeat. <laughs> well, you know what, actually, here's what I'm gonna do. Your, your powers, your actual use of powers works fine, but you are still, like, out in the open, and it is a flashy display of powers, so you are just going to attract more attention from people who weren't previously there. And you're you're attracting a crowd around you again. <laughs> and you're gonna mark a condition for this as well. Um, yeah, no, now she's like getting angry too. And I think she even like just stops the song altogether, turns around and is just like, Bane Raven told you to get lost. What, she didn't say anything like that. We just got here. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> We're just that was that was cool. What, what are you What are you doing? What What's your hey, idol name? Who are you? Hey, everyone, could could you give us some space, please? We're kind of trying to practice, and we need the space for our next like performances. We really appreciate. There's the plenty support, of space. Though. It's an open field. Uh, you're kind of distracting. Could they try and call the bees? Yes, you can. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna have her try another illusion, but bees work too. Oh, you can. Like you can both do something. Um. 
I think she creates an illusion of the vice president like strolling up from around like the corner. Ooh, I love mm-hmm. it. I will roll freak again. Hopefully this works. Sure. Stop. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, uh, yeah, you both rolled really well on that. Uh, so Lucia got a 10 Ooh. and uh, Queen Bee got a 13. On the, They both rolled very well on their freak checks. <laughs> yeah, so Trixie is going to create this illusion in a sec. Queen Bee, what are you doing with your bees? I'm just going to have them swarm over us and start circling overhead. Buzzing very loudly. <laughs> sure. You, so you get this, it's almost like a Ride of the Valkyries type entrance as this illusion of Vice Principal O'Hara, <laughs> a blonde lady in a tight bun updo. She rounds the corner and she looks very like stern and menacing as she walks around the corner with like a cloud of bees hovering <laughs> above her head. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and you can almost hear, again, that Ride of the Valkyries music in the background <laughs> swelling as she turns the corner and stares a death glare at, like, the gathered students. <laughs> and it doesn't take long for them to uh, fuck off. <laughs> oh, we're never going to get used to that. Well, that's a good likeness. Did you do anything else with the illusion of the vice principal? Um... Lucia has it like stand next to her and it mimics her like motions as she's talking and I think she moves like very animatedly like hand on a hip one arm waving and just like yeah well you know usually like I'm pretty good um you know my powers are top tier I have been practicing quite a lot but you know you don't stretch or whatever and then she like waves her hand and the illusion goes away <laughs> all right I thought it was pretty cool especially the rep section thanks uh, yes, that was very impressive. Yeah, it was rad. Yeah, I'm great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we better get to the secret room before we... Well, wait, before we do that, um, let's discuss. And then I, like, do that thing once again where I corral everyone and it'll be like, let's huddle and discuss this. Okay. Lucia makes more clones of herself so she can have a huddle. <laughs> yes I love it sorry now I'm just picturing this I know lots of shows do this but um, I'm picturing my next life as a villainess uh, whenever yes. they show Katarina's internal sort of thought process it's yes. five different versions of her arguing yes same energy but it's like five different versions of Lucia being like no, you're amazing. No, you're great. Yeah, no, you killed it. <laughs> and then one of them being like, mm, your timing was a little off. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. It's always that one. Oh my gosh. Do the other ones all stop and gasp? <laughs> um, they just, yeah, they push her out and her like illusion like, fades away. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> How's it going um, in the other huddle? Um, okay, so what do you think? I thought she's really good. Um, yes, that was that was that was really good. And uh, I guess, uh, well, do we do we need uh, another member? I, I, I is is a question. I guess that's a good question. I don't see why we can't have her on the team because uh we didn't really set out to have a limit and she's clearly talented and you know there's like so many idol groups with like you know 25 members and stuff and so i don't think like adding a a sixth member of the team would be too much i know it's just uh for her to come up to us right after a big break and i know it makes sense but i mean we've we spent a lot of time, you know, getting to know each other and figuring out how to work together. And, you know, I hope we can find Anne again as well. And Well, uh, the new girl could be useful. Like, that's a good power to have. Yeah, that's that's true. Plus, I think now is probably the best time to get another member. I mean, if we once we become really solid in our group, it might be harder to integrate anyone else. Yeah. How about if we do end up getting an influx of a bunch of new people, maybe we set up a separate team. Hmm. 
But I think for now, if it's just one person, I don't see why not. Yeah, it's just, she's got style, she's got power, but there's something. Can I try something? Yeah, sure. So I break from the huddle, go to Lucia Huddle, and tap her on the shoulder. <laughs> Does she catch the real one first off? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good question. Uh, yeah, because I'm the only one dressed in pink, so yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, she turns around and all of the uh, illusions, like, back into, like, her form. <laughs> and she just, like, stands up, like, kind of remonstrate and just, yes? So, you think you can just waltz in, right? I'm taking you by the hand and I'm actually starting to lead. Oh. Because if, uh, if you think that, let's see how you can waltz. Okay. Uh, Can you follow my steps? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <coughs> yes. Okay, I'm dancing. Because, uh, you know, when you're super idle, thing can be, things can be pretty hectic. You need to be able to think on your feet. You need to know what you're doing. You need to prepare for the tempo to change. And while I do that, I'm backing up and I start uh, dancing backwards up the wall so that she's in a very awkward position. And I'm going to try to pierce your mask, but I am uh, affirming my heroic identity to switch my mundane with my mask label. So I'm going to use superior. Nice. I love a good excuse to use some Janus moves. I'm actually going to use a delinquent move. Fantastic. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use Mary Contrary. When someone tries to pierce your mask, comfort you, or support you, or provoke you, you can interfere. So I'm okay. going to roll superior on that. Okay, roll on superior You two. get to do yours first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a negative two to your roll. Oh, darn. Okay. And you also <laughs> got a 10 plus. You just got a 12. Oh, yeah. So you also take influence over them or clear a condition. I will clear a condition. I'm going to clear insecure. Okay. All right. I have, uh, sorry, minus one or minus two? Minus two. Minus two. Perfect. Oh! <gasps> <Damn. laughs> and was the minus two included in that? Yeah. Yes, it was. Oh, so you still got a 10. <laughs> so you would have gotten a, a natural 12. Wow, that's impressive. Uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, then. Yeah. So uh, how does this look? Like... Clearly, Trixie is trying to, like, mess with whatever, like, Queen Bee thinks she's doing, but it's not going to be quite as successful as she hopes. How does that look? Um, I mean, if I can, like, add, like, a little bit of flavor on it without, like, using too much of, like, my abilities. Is that cool? Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so as they're waltzing and stuff, um, and, like, Queen Bee is trying to speed up the tempo and everything and is asking these questions... I think Lucia kind of like gets a little cold in the face and wills her other ability to basically try to make Queen Bee not trip because Queen Bee is just so graceful, but you know, she's walking up of a wall and walls have cracks and stuff, and it would just be so unfortunate if Queen Bee slipped on a crack in the middle of this really cool sort of like talk that they're having but I don't think it happens. And so like mm. the sort of like upper hand Lucia is trying to get in the energy of the conversation doesn't, I don't think it happens. Maybe uh, I stay for a second by recover. Yeah. Or maybe you like slip, but you turn it into like an actual like yeah. move. Like maybe you s turn it into a spin. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Oh yeah. That's so queen beat. Not me <laughs> being a stan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 so I'm staring you straight in the eye and asking, so why do you think you have what it takes? Why are you here? And I'm going to, let's see, it's uh, a full hit, so I can ask, uh, oh, I can ask three questions. What are you really planning? Yeah. Um, I want to be an idol. I want to do this, but I realize I can't really do it by myself. So I'm joining the club. Okay. And uh, I also want to know, what do you intend to do? Like, are you going to be a problem? You guys are good, but there's always room for improvement. And so I'm going to be the person that covers all of your shortfallings. I'm not perfect either. There's things you guys can do that I can't do. And vice versa. 
Okay, and then at the last move I get closer, lean in, and how could I gain influence over you? <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucia starts to turn red a little bit and just spits out, you're already really cool, so like it's fine. <laughs> Actually, I think Queen Bee from our session zero already, like Queen Bee already has influence yeah. over oh, perfect. Lucia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of her answer. <laughs> you could gain influence again, maybe, okay. yeah. in some way. So I just uh, twirl you around and send you spinning pre pretty much uh, for Angie to catch. <laughs> um, yeah, I catch her. <laughs> okay. I think the new girl can stay. <laughs> I'll just give, like, a, a, a hand. Um, even though, like, Lucia just got pushed into Angie, uh, she, like, shoves Angie away from her as if Angie, like, is at fault here, um, and straightens up and recomposes herself. I think Angie just finds it funny at this point, so she's just trying to hide <laughs> her smile. Because this is, she's seen B do this to a few people now, and it's always <laughs> a joy to watch. <laughs> so. Love to watch Master at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're part of the team. Cool, because I have a lot of notes. Oh. Vivi was just, like, blushing watching this because she has not really <laughs> seen Queen Bee do this, and she's, like, suspicious and unsure, but wasn't planning to, like, actually interrogate Lucia. <laughs> so, uh, she's just, 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 um, yes, I, I, I guess so. That's, um... <clears throat> It's, uh, well, welcome, welcome to Rhythmics. All right. I'm not going to give you much more trouble getting back to your club room after this, because now you've chased away enough people and it's late enough in the day that there's not <laughs> as many students in the hallway. So I'm going to say you don't have as much trouble, like, getting to the room from here. <laughs> so are you heading there now, I'm guessing? Uh, yeah, we'll head there now. Okay. Um, but Angie still does do a look around. You know, just to make sure nobody's there. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, okay, everyone, follow me. But even then, she still takes some side motions. And I kind of picture yeah. them like sneaking in across the hallway to <laughs> dive into another classroom, even though there's nobody around. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. Like you hear footsteps, but it just, it's just a janitor walking by. There's like one student at their locker, and then she's like, quick, quick. <laughs> doing like that traffic um, thing while everybody sneaks by it's just ridiculous stuff like that i can see you like just like edging like under the windows of classroom doors where you know other clubs are yeah. meeting <laughs> the whole time lucia is thinking to herself i probably could change the way we look like i probably could pull off illusion that big but says nothing <laughs> <laughs> So yes, you do make it to the club room, and to your surprise, when you get there, Ms. Doyle is there, and so is Karen. <laughs> They're waiting for you. Afternoon, Miss Doyle. Afternoon, Karen. Trixie just waves. So, why weren't you here earlier? Uh, we ran into some fans. You know how it is. And Ms. Doyle sighs. She says, oh, yeah, um... I'm so sorry. I wasn't even thinking about that earlier. I've just been so swamped with work today. It completely slipped my mind that you might have trouble getting to the room without um, some trouble with that. I guess you got here all right, though? We did, but I think uh, the school needs to invest in a security detail for all of us. <laughs> well, actually, I do have a fun little surprise for all of you that might make future trips a little easier for you. Oh, what? Okay. And Karen moves almost like a Vanna White assistant over <laughs> to the far side of the room to like demonstrate something. You see her go to the far side of the room, the southeastern most wall, and she's standing in front of a big tall poster. You know those big school posters that say like, reading is cool, reach mm -hmm. for the stars. <laughs> yeah. And it has like a big picture of a cat hanging from a tree branch and it's reading a book or something. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many different posters mashed up together. <laughs> That's literally nice. Yeah. It's it's gotta be a picture that says reach for the stars and there's starry night sky reading a book. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my god, god. yes. Yeah. I love it. Uh, this is a sponsored library program poster that Starry Night Sky is a part of. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Are the Wiggles yeah. like a super <laughs> idol group? Not the Wiggles themselves, oh, no. but you know what I the mean? Wiggles. Like yeah. the equivalent yeah. in this universe. <laughs> Oh no. There probably would be like <laughs> idol groups for kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Absolutely there are. Which is like so adorable. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's probably like a lucrative career for idols who are don't want to be in the bigger competitive circuit but still want to perform and stuff. There's just like this mm-hmm. robust yeah. kids music idol circuit. Super kids oh, yeah. pop. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for sure, kids bump yeah. idols. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyways, yes, so there's this big poster, um, and you kind of realize, you didn't realize before, this poster is actually kind of big enough to, like, possibly conceal a door. <laughs> and sure enough, <laughs> Karen, like, pulls back the edge of this big tall poster to reveal a door frame. <laughs> oh. Ta-da! <laughs> Um, and Miss Doyle goes to join her. Was that always there? What? So, Miss Doyle says as she goes to open this door, and you can see it's kind of dark beyond where this door frame is, and you can see there's a bunch of, like, stuff piled up there. Uh, she says, there's a reason this conference room was chosen as the idol club room. Um, not only is it big and out of the way, but the school administrators did figure that if one of our club's heaven forbid ever got popular someday they might need an alternate way in and out of the room this door actually leads into the storage room of the auditorium uh this used to be a door that the drama club would use to bring props in and out of storage without having to go through the whole auditorium first so if you do need a discreet way to get into the conference room you could go into the auditorium first and move behind the curtained areas in that space and enter through the storage room this way. I love this. That would save a lot of time. Yeah. And I'm sure the drama club would absolutely be willing to uh, help cover you from anyone who tries to follow you into the auditorium. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah, no no worries. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this earlier. Like I said, I've been it's just been like a big hectic day for me today. Um speaking of which, one of the things I I did get today that I do need to pass on to you um is I had someone from the Stormlight reach out to the school for your contact information. Uh so I gave her your Rhythmics email. Um she said she had something something to send you. She said her name was Petra. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Uh, yes. Yeah. Whoa. Uh yes, we she was she was our contact at the Stormlight. Yes, she's wonderful. Oh yeah, no, she seemed like a very nice woman. Yes, yeah, she's great. So yes, I expect you'll get a message from her fairly soon here if she hasn't sent you one already, maybe. She kind of turns to Lucia as well during all this and, and realizes she hasn't like she's been very rude and hasn't said hello. Uh, uh, hi, uh you, thank you. I'm I'm glad you made it here as well, Lucia. I'm sorry again for the trouble about getting to the room. I I, I imagine did you get to know the other members well enough on your way here? Uh, yeah, no worries. And it's Trixie. Oh yes, okay. I'll I'll note that for next time. So I keep all the secret idol club lists and documents. <laughs> she taps her forehead. Yeah, she especially got to know Queen Bee really well. I think. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. I'm glad that Queen Bee is being so welcoming. And she gives Queen Bee a smile. Of course. She's just blissfully unaware. She just fumes. She just sits there and fumes. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen actually gives Queen Bee a fairly genuine smile as well and says, I'm glad too. I think Queen Bee needs more friends. Well, that's um, that's nice, but we should... Um... Thank you, Ms. Doyle. We should, I guess, talk about our act and where Trixie can fit into it. Yes, I'll leave you alone to do that. I won't intrude much further on this. <laughs> thank you, Miss Doyle. Yes, thank you. I'm looking forward to getting to know you, and I'm sure your clubmates are as well. So I'll leave you to that. She gives you a wave as she leaves. Karen, this is Lucia, our new member. Sup, Lucia. She gives you a, a lazy wave and a smile. Sup. I've seen you around. You seem cool. 
I think Lucia just like blinks at her. Uh, aren't you like grade 12? Well, I get around. <laughs> I think she just like narrows her eyes at her trying to get a read on this <laughs> individual. <laughs> you just get like an opaque smiling wall. <laughs> Cool. And she, like, takes out her phone, which is also just as pink and sparkly and glittery as the rest of her outfit, and just pulls up her notes and types down some notes about Karen, which is really just <laughs> Karen, space, question mark. That's all she has. <laughs> she nods. I think you're gonna fit in great. Space likes me? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, well, we do. We have. Um, I'm the vocalist, at least so far. Elementum. Jaden is uh, doing our drums, our backing instrumentals. Another member who we've been having trouble contacting was playing guitar, and I hope that we can find out what happened to her. And what do you mean? Well, uh, and it, Vivi like looks back at you know, makes sure that the door was closed. Uh, well, we haven't heard from her in a while, and we suspect, we suspect something's happened to her, but we have been trying to figure out more information before telling anyone. Did she, like, just go missing all of a sudden? Yeah. Yeah, you probably would have noticed that the one eight-foot-tall golem student who goes to this school suddenly hasn't been around for, like, the last week or so. Mm, she's hard to miss. Lucia kind of, like, gets quiet, like, thinks for a second, and then just like, yeah, my brother's... Actually, Aaron, is Delia, like, just Teo's friend, or, like, they a thing? Uh, they're just a friend. Yeah. They're students in the same, like, <laughs> med program. <laughs> they're survivors together, really, is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my brother's friend was saying that her younger brother went missing, and that he's friends with, like, an eight-foot rock girl too mm -hmm. hmm that's worrying yeah were they an idol or no apparently just some kind of like kid hmm um well yeah sorry i didn't hope it's not weird to launch into this sort of um problem as soon as you're part of the club but obviously we've been worried about that and uh some other things we've noticed are are have you heard of crimson signal oh yeah my dad worked for them well that's not exactly right my dad did work for the city for crimson signal what what does that mean he built their ugly building oh oh huh. yeah my dad does like um city planning and engineering and stuff so he has a like he did he approve the plans or i guess I don't think anyone's going to ask Lucia to steal building plans from her father. That's um, that would be completely Yet. inappropriate. Well, not with that attitude, but <sighs> I mean, there. I don't think there's any harm in asking. Okay, let's 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 double back here and let's just tell the story. Twenty minutes later. Yeah, we can gloss over that. If you, you you give Lucia the gist of what you found out, basically mm -hmm. that. You found this evidence of weird magic around where Lucia disappeared. You've also noticed that Crimson Signal is sponsoring a lot of weirdly low profile idols. And you went to investigate at Vaporwave show and there was weirdness there with like you and Vaporwave getting tired. And you confirmed that there's some sort of energy sapping going on from that stage that you were on. Well, I mean, like. I can't sit here and tell you that I can steal my dad's plans or anything, but I do know that, like, we're a big family. Things go missing all the time. Karen gives you a devious smile. <laughs> I like the way she thinks. So, basically, we currently suspect that they have something to do with this, and we just want to get our friend back. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, and... Lucia like gets a glint in her eye. If I rescued my brother's friend's brother, then word would get back to my brother about how this really cool group of super idols with a girl named Trixie saved the day. I'm in. Okay. 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 Now what? 
<laughs> well, at about that time, conveniently, who monitors the Rhythmics email? I'm guessing it's probably Angie. Um, or it could be Karen, too, since she's a social media person. You know, I would say it was probably Karen. Okay. So you hear a notification on Karen's phone. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, what's a good notification sound for Karen? <laughs> It's like some old meme music song. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's a, that's a, an oldie Oh my boogie. god. It's like Numa Numa or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. She likes a lot of classic music, actually. I think it might actually just be like, I don't know, something from like even if like a Beatles song or something. Lucia kind of like tilts her head just like, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. If it's a Beatles song, Jaden definitely like jamming to it as well. Yeah, you get a little riff from, like, I don't know, from Sgt. Pepper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, oh, we got an email from Petra. Oh, uh, good. What what did she say? And she brings out her phone. I don't know if she wants to, like, maybe she will read it out <laughs> loud to you all. But if she, if you want, you can peer over her shoulder to read it, too. <laughs> the, the classic rhythmics, uh, everyone peering over one person's shoulder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Lucia, like, forces her way right behind Karen and everybody else. She just squeezes it. <laughs> yeah, because she's not tall enough to see over anybody. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the email reads, Hey there, y'all. First off, big congratulations on the show. I've seen lots of debuts in my time, but that was one of the most exciting. Absolutely no lies. If that's where you're starting from, I can only imagine where you're going. You might even make it to the other Texas someday, for all we know. Jane's like, there is another Texas. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't tell her about the other Texas. Uh, Lucia looks over her shoulder. Yeah, that's where my aunt lives. And just like goes back to the email. <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you, it's Alberta. <laughs> Lucia has an aunt in Calgary, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Jaden and Vivi, don't think I forgot about Twiddle's gift to you. We gave the Snapdragons their stolen instruments back and they were all really grateful to have them again. When I mentioned that we were hoping to get you all some kind of non-stolen gift in return, they said they have something that might just fit the bill. So, here's the pitch. How would you like an all-expenses-paid trip to Camp Grand Star this coming weekend? It's a two-day training camp that prepares new idols for the Sing Star Tournament. They teach you exercises, routines, tips and tricks. They help you network with people who can give you a leg up in the competition. And on the last day, you finish out with a trip to the water park. There's free room and board the night that you're there, continental breakfast, room service, the works. Snapdragons can book enough spots for you and all your club mates. They say it's the least they can do for you all. What do you think? Anyway, hope you're all doing okay. Hope Anne turns up again soon, too. Any word of her since everything? Let me know. She still owes me an arm wrestle. Love, Petra. Muscle arm emoji. Oh, I love Petra. <laughs> Me too. So yeah, that's what you get from Petra. So what day of the week are we at now? You're on Monday currently. On Monday. Okay. Uh, I turned to everyone and I said, well, we got to do it, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Of course. Yeah. That sounds like a great opportunity to get some practice in with Trixie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. And we have the week to investigate Anne's disappearance and Crimson Signal. Do we have a plan for that? Well, we can spend the rest of the week figuring out the plan. Um, I've been thinking, even if we get access, if we get in, how are we going to figure out how that stuff works? Karen puts a hand to her lips. Mm, I might see if I can reach out to some of my techie friends. Maybe we can get some help on that front. Yeah, we need, like, a tech rat like the misfits have in, like, Gem in the Holocrafts. Yeah. <laughs> Lucia's thinking of someone, but she's staying, keeping her mouth shut. <laughs> and just, yeah, no, like, hit up, um, yeah, hit up your tech friends. Will do. And she writes down a note on her palm. <laughs> palm. She's old school. Like, she, she's the sort of person who writes on her hand. No, I know, but... <laughs> Oh, okay. Andy's over there with like 15 clipboards and Karen's like, nope, my hand's good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter that she has her phone out. Her hand is something she's more likely to see, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. So do we want to like spend the rest of the time 
brainstorming? Did we want to do idle stuff? I don't know. How do your meetings go? Who's president? Is there a president? And if not, where can I apply? Uh, We have uh, Bain Raven and I are co-presidents. Yes. I respect it. Does she seem disappointed? (laughs) No, no, I respect it. I respect it. If anything, like, she just kind of, like, nods to herself and is thinking, like, okay, you know, Angie's a year 11. There's time. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) So, Trixie, you did mention something about some notes you have. Yes. Whips out her phone again. If everyone will please take a seat. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Are we all sitting like crisscross applesauce on the floor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Please um, on the floor because it makes her feel that much taller. <laughs> yeah. Jane is definitely on the floor. Vivi just makes a little purple pillar and behind her and sits on that. <laughs> the, the Bernie <laughs> meme. She just goes full <laughs> Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Just with her hands folded over her, like, many uh, pleats in, in her skirt. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Same energy. <laughs> Karen was already sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you for your time. This is Trixie's list of rhythmic improvements. <clears throat> and she's just, like, points a finger right at Jaden. Elementum, you need to work on your control, Okay. I'm talking anger, I'm talking composure, and I'm definitely talking powers. An idol should never make a barrier break. And no matter what happens, you should keep your cool. So what you got kicked by a pony? It's a pony. My little sister can handle ponies better than you can. And normally, normally Jaden's not an angry person. I don't know him from my next door neighbor or the man down the street. I don't know anything about him, and neither did anybody at that show. So now all they know is that your drummer has anger issues and can make giant rock creatures. Not a good combination. Jaden's like kind of suddenly nods. Aww. Not you making me feel bad about my bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't feel bad about it. Keep going. Don't feel bad about it. That's what Jaden would do. He's getting scolded, and he's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jaden has that effect on the entire team. <laughs> Does Lucia feel bad about it? No, Trixie feels fine. It's me, Liv, the player. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, L- Vivi looks alarmed at this, like, both from the sudden switch to a list of complaints and also just, like, that anyone would have such uh, mean things to say about Jaden. Just a second. Jaden had a bad night. There were several instances where he was targeted specifically because he was keeping the beat for us. And we didn't like what happened, but considering the alternative, I think Jaden did what he had to do. If Jaden's always going to be a target, then shouldn't that mean he should practice the most control out of everybody in the group? That's a good point. And then she just kind of slinks back <laughs> Jane like speaks up finally and just kind of nods yeah yeah it's a good point I that was technically my first I guess competitive show and I didn't think I'd be such a target but you've got a point I need to work on that good good well I'm sure that Trixie will have notes for all of us and is not just focusing on Elementum Oh, no, I do. Trixie walks down, points to Angie. Bane Raven does a great job at creating openings and then points to everybody else. So you should take advantage of them. Also, and then points like right back to Angie, an idol should never swear on stage unless you are dropping a very fired diss track. Because she did, like, I think she told, yeah, she told <laughs> Vivi to, to, to fuck her up. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I think I can swear whenever I want. Uh, she walks one more step to Queen B, points to Queen B. Everyone should follow Queen B's lead for moves. She has a very offensive and defensive style. No uh, notes for Vivi, thank you. It sits down on the floor. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think Vivi is 
confused and speechless because she was like, you know, building up her courage to get criticized. No, she's just a stan. <laughs> So I'm doing the narrowing the eyes thing where like, hmm. I think the way Vivi's interpreting it is that she's done like harsh training and criticism with Rain Shadow Records and especially with Mary Rain. So she's just like, okay, it's time to have every little thing that I did wrong and every little movement criticized and then nothing. (laughs) Jaden's just sitting there in his thoughts now. Um. Actually, you know, I think after a moment, I speak up and I think, not that I I lost control of my powers before, or that I lost my powers entirely and and left myself open, or... Well, I mean, I was only taking notes on, like, the performance that I went to. I wasn't at the, you know, incident. And it's not your fault that your powers got taken away. That was a really underhanded move. And honestly, if I had been there... I don't know what I would have done, but I would have tried. I probably would have fought her. I wanted to fight her. I was stuck in the back. But otherwise, it was a really good show. Well, she did pay. That's true. She did. Uh, I'm going to voluntarily give Lucia influence over me for that. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Uh, Yeah, just because expecting to be torn down and, and then Trixie actually, like, told her it's not your fault. It's fine. Also, I'm just looking at um, Valerie's list of influences. I feel like Valerie has like the longest list of people that she's influenced by out of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> she has a good support system. Yeah. She does. <laughs> so yeah, you talk out a few more things about like specifics with the club and with what you're going to do for the rest of the week. And I think you're you're starting to wind down this meeting. How do you close out your meeting? Okay. Um, Trixie? Yes. If you do happen to find some very specific plans for a very specific building in the Neon District uh, for a very specific company that may have kidnapped our friend, and you also just happen to find a very specific copy of all those very specific documents that we're looking for, um, feel free to, you know, keep them instead of throwing them out and bring them to school sometime. Yeah, I mean, my mom, like, when she starts like getting on her metal head influenced cleaning binges tends to throw out a lot of things so you know if something goes missing it's like totally normal yeah and i mean they're like old blueprints or whatever so it's not like you know anyone's using them right now and also my dad thinks it's genuinely the ugliest building he's ever like designed so oh it is it is absolutely the ugliest building it is awful yeah, I didn't think it was actually their building for quite a while because I didn't think they would want their name connected to anything that looks like that. It also like doesn't look like a C or an R. It just looks like a weird blob. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you can't see the C unless you're like flying overhead. That's a really strange decision. Mm-hmm. And there's just so much yellow on red. You said there were palm trees in there too, right? There was. This is Canada. That's just like bad for the environment. Yeah, I. that's what I said. And then on top of that, to take care of the palm trees, they had it so humid in there. Oh no. Who designed this place? So kidnapping, environmental crimes, and ugly buildings. The list just grows. And a potential conspiracy to steal people's powers. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's secondary to mm-hmm. the other stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the kidnapping is definitely the worst so far. Oh, for sure, yeah. I don't know, have you seen that building? I have not. It's really bad. But interior design is also a crime. You're right, Karen. Just a lot of equally bad things going on here. Like, pick a struggle. You're right. Okay, well, um, thank you for uh, joining the group. I think you're going to be a great addition, and I look forward to continuing to work well together. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the team, Trixie. Okay, and then she claps her hands. Before we end for the day, we are going through our choreography drills that totally exist. 
even though I just thought of them just now. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, like basic stretches and stuff like that. Yeah. You too, Jaden. <laughs> even if you're just playing the drums, we never know when we need you to dance. Oh. Come on, people. Okay. Okay. so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen Bee 15160871. Lucia Moore, slash Trixie, was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter, at Liv in a Day. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube, at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website, at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. Lucia's character theme is Power, a Creative Commons track by Terry Skills, who can be found at soundcloud.com slash beats by Terry Skills, with Z's where the two ending S's would be. Lucia's transformation theme is Loft, a Creative Commons track by Jamjar, who can be found at soundcloud.com slash jamjarproductions. Queen Bee's Electro Waltz is Tremors, a Creative Commons track by Worthling, who can be found at soundcloud.com slash Worthling. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from storyblocks.com, freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.